I ask uh, Dr. Emil Bierumbor to conclude. You, you're there? Yeah. Uh, come on. Thank you very much. You want to say here? Or two words. You're okay with that? Uh, just to remind the audience that your grandfather, Niels Bohr, who received the Nobel Prize in 1922, so that's 100 years ago, a century ago, and who died in 62, which is 60 years ago, is of course the great physicist who made foundational contribution to the understanding uh, of atomic structure and quantum theory. Well, you know, I like that because I was trained in that, so. And it w he was at the same time a philosopher and uh, a promoter of scientific research. That's what we're here for, in a way. And uh, of course, his dialogue with this other monument of physics, Albert Einstein, is one of the greatest moments in science. Uh, I'll just remember, uh, remind you that uh, he founded the Institute of Theoretical Physics at the University of Copenhagen, and now it's, it's known as the Niels Bohr Institute, if I'm right. And uh, one last thing. He had, uh, um, he had such a role during the Second World War. Well, and maybe you'll talk about that, but that's so important to remind this because that's how scientists are made of. That's, that's, that's very touching. And uh, is, of course, um, so important to the foundation of CERN. We talked about CERN and, uh, and, and also IAEA, and I think you'll, you'll develop that. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for this interesting discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, this year is, as we heard, a dual anniversary. It's 100 years ago that Niels Bohr won the Nobel Prize in Physics for his groundbreaking atomic model. And that provided a novel and accurate description of the basic nature of atoms. And it also laid the foundation for la what later became quantum mechanics. But it's also the 100 years for his establishment of the Niels Bohr Institute in Copenhagen. It was not called Niels Bohr Institute at that time. It was actually the Institute for Theoretical Physics. But it became that in 62 when he died. This place was remarkable from its invention. And it uh, goes both then and now. It was fast a fantastic playground for bright scientists of all nationalities. It was an open discussion forum for um, all the fundamental questions and debates. It witnessed a lot of breakthrough discoveries and Nobel Prizes, and it was the birthplace of the CERN theory division for, in fact, around 10 years. But still, and that's, I think, the important point, the Institute preserved a certain minimalistic hierarchy. It was a playful atmosphere. It was a refuge. It was actually a a place that people during before Second World War went to um, be rescued and, and maybe go to other countries. It was a home for researchers. It was a place where science went hand in hand with intellectual games, with jokes, and with outdoor sports. That was very dear to Nils Bohr. So Nils' vision for scientific organizations are today the norm. We don't question these things. And it's ingrained in our thinking about having a sound and a productive scientific environment. And as this original institute of Niels Bohr, it's fueled by these ideas of openness, equal opportunities, research freedom, and especially this courage to ask the deep questions. Niels Bohr's character was also um, very passionate. He was very, very fearless as a political influencer. He right, right to the top. And an essential aspect of his legacy is to learn from this with the emergence of nuclear weapons and facing their devastating consequences for the world. He simply decided to act and he addressed politicians everywhere with his letter to the United Nations. This philosophy of his was very simple. It was based on open exchange of ideas. 
It was based on international collaboration, and it was based on this drive for new scientific discoveries. And this are all topics that lie at the heart of what we embrace here at this conference. I am sure that he would have been delighted and he would have felt right at home. So again, I thank the organizers for making, letting me make these remarks about Niels Bohr and his institute and his connection to basic research. Thank you very much for the attention.